So one of the main questions when it comes to the murder of Jill Dando is how did her killer know that she was going to arrive home on the day and at the time she did if she was not living at 29 Gowan Avenue and she had no set pattern of her comings and goings there was her phone bugged did her fiance tell someone she was going to be there was she followed no it's quite simple really the man that shot Jill Dando was sporadically turning up in and around where she lived for weeks at least leading up to her murder and to me this says lone obsessive stalker rather than professional hitman on the 26th of april last year there are a number of sightings of a person hanging around in gowan avenue in fulham outside the address where jill dando lived the man was seen on two previous mondays before the 26th i noticed a man standing outside the nursery school I was going to a cafe in Munster Road for breakfast. I was in the cafe about 35 to 40 minutes and when I left and started walking south down Munster Road he was still standing outside the nursery school. As I walked through the gateway I noticed the man was now standing on the south side of Waldo Avenue at the junction with Munster Road by the tea shop. I left the house to go down the bookies on the Fulham Palace Road. I realised that the man that I'd seen a week earlier was now standing at a junction of Waldo Avenue and Silbury Street. And when I came back 20 minutes later, he was still standing where I'd seen him. As I was walking down Silbury Street I saw the same man again. He sort of got a bit agitated and tried to hide his face while looking straight down at the pavement. So according to the Crime Watch UK reconstruction we have a witness that see a potential suspect on three different occasions and on two of those occasions the man was standing for at least 20 to 35 minutes now I believe this is Jill Dando's stalker and I believe he's strategically placing himself in and, and around where she lives so he can see her and all this happened at least two weeks before she was murdered then on the morning of the 26th of April a mother was driving her son to school in Gowan Avenue and she saw a man wearing a trilby type hat watch him mum he was looking up like he was waiting for something. He had the worst ill-fitting suit on that you could imagine. Well, he is a funny one. I was delivering mail along the odd numbers till I reached 29, which I know is Jill Dando's house. I've met Jill a few times, either delivering her mail or passing her in the street. I took a couple of paces down the front garden path and just before I reached the front garden gate I saw a man standing in the road looking directly at number 29. Uh, it was like he thought someone was going to receive the mail. It is around about 11 o'clock. A man is driving again in Gowan Avenue but going the other way. He had noticed a man in Gowan Avenue standing between two parked cars just standing there. I better go, I don't want to get a ticket. Yeah, I'd love to glean. Bye. I was weighing up whether to go home or to Sally Parsons, a shop on Fulham Road. I was thinking quite hard about it, and as I sat there, there was a man about one car length away. He had noticeable dark hair and a blue suit, and he didn't seem uncomfortable or uneasy. Um, I was thinking of my dilemma at the time, but I was somehow dimly aware that he might have been an estate agent.
I was in Bishop's Road waiting to cross Monster Road. Out of the corner of my eye, there was a man outside the double glazing shop. He looked out of context in every way. His clothes didn't fit, his hat didn't fit, and he acted very strangely. I saw a man standing on the corner of Gowan Avenue, just very, very agitated. And the one thing that I couldn't help but keep looking at was like the glasses he had on his face. They didn't seem to fit. I believe all the sightings of the man in this video is of the same man and this is the man that shot Jill Dando. This man was stalking Jill Dando and he knew where she lived because he lived in a local area and if a famous person or celebrity lived in your area, people gossip, you would probably know. Another reason why I believe this man lived in a local area is because even though it was not shown in the crime watch reconstruction, the, a man that fitted this description was first witnessed outside Jill Dando's house at 7am in the morning she was shot. Jill Dando was shot at 11.30. What was he doing between that time? Probably going home and coming back. This man had mental health issues and acquired an attraction for Jill Dando through her work in the media and by watching her on television. In fact, on Tuesday the 20th of April, Jill Dando was on Crime Watch. Britain's most important unsolved cases. Now live, you can help solve them. The next day on the 21st of April, the suspect was seen hanging around on the corner of Sidbury Road and Wardour Avenue. On the 24th of April, Jill Dando was on the cover of Radio Times. On the 25th of April, Jill Dando was on Antiques Inspector. On the 26th of April, Jill Dando was murdered. I believe this man was actually getting fueled by watching her on television. Every time he sees her on television or in a magazine, it fuels and feeds his fantasies and he begins to stalk her. This could have been happening for months or even years and it would just so happen that on one of the days he was there, Jill Dando did actually turn up. We now live at in a society where there are a significant proportion of our fellow citizens who live very lonely, isolated lives, but at the same time, they're bombarded with images of other people's intimacy. So a lonely, sad individual sitting in their one-room flat can watch large numbers of desirable people apparently talking to them, and it feeds their fantasies. I think that violence is imminent in stalking because the stalker is inevitably frustrated. Uh, the stalker inevitably is brought up against the limitations of reality and that can produce anger and anger can lead to threats and to violence. Clearly if the person is severely mentally disordered and increasingly intrusive this is worry. If the person's a substance abuser and becomes threatening, if the person has already got a history of violence, all of these things increase the risk. Public figures l inhabit our worlds and you never know quite what imaginings um, are laid on to people who uh, are in our living rooms day in, day out um, on television. And that can add to the complexity. Uh, and this is where you have this problem uh, that I think was a, a particular problem for the police in this particular case, is that although the individual apparently was a stranger uh, to her assailant, uh, in some ways she was somebody her assailant knew very well. And that relationship issue is part of the things that it's so difficult to disentangle. So in my opinion, there's two possible reasons why he shot her. 
Reason number one, out of pure jealousy and envy. He was envious of her career and of the fact that she was about to get engaged. Almost like if I can't have you, then nobody can have you. Reason number two, which I tend to lean towards more is, he didn't actually set out to murder her. In his head, he believed that he actually had a chance with Jill Dando. So he was romantically courting her. This would explain why the the trilby hats and the ill-fitting suits so he's actually dressing up trying to look dapper for a chance encounter with Jill Dando he's actually um, romanticized in his head over and over and over again about meeting her so when he actually did meet her it didn't go the way he anticipated it would he ha- happened to have a gun on him and shot her this would explain um, why this man wasn't bothered about standing out in the street for everyone to see him because it wasn't premeditated just happened to have a gun on him because of his mental health issues Um, he would walk with a gun to go to the supermarket he would walk with a gun to go and visit his mum so the gun had nothing to do with killing Jill Dando he just happened to have the gun on him because it made him feel more confident anyway or he's living in some imagination world where he needs to have a gun this would explain why the caliber of gun was well it was a reboard gun a smoothboard barrel gun with a temperamental bullet this doesn't say criminal sophistication to me this man wasn't even wearing gloves in fact there's nothing about this murder that shows that there was really planning or signs that it was premeditated so i believe maybe he was just caught in her and he couldn't take the rejection so he shot her